Black Dino, we rockin' with Third Coast Avenue, where you deliver, we deliver. Bass, they lurking on his Instagram just to see his face. What up, it's your boy Pro Up Daddy, man. He rock with us on the Third Coast Avenue show, man, where you pull up and we pull up. And we pulled up on the west side right off of Joy Road, man. I got YG and Della. What's good, my guy? What's going on? Appreciate you, my guy. Appreciate you kicking this time with me and being able to uh, consume some of your music and let the fans know, know a little bit about you and shit, man. So, why don't we get into this, man? And how you got into rap music? Man, shit. That shit crazy. Like, my, uh, I got a cousin named Jay Julio. Okay. And he, uh, he signed Posada right now. Oh, okay. And um, he always used to do music back in the day and shit. Uh -huh. And one day we was in the car, whatever, or at his mama's house, I can't remember which one. But he like, uh, you should do music, you should do music. I'm putting it off. I'm like, hell no, that's your shit. Yeah, yeah. But me and I get to, uh, I get to like middle school. I was in elementary at that time, but I got to middle school. My best friend, um, he go by uh, GG5. Okay. And um, he was doing music too. He was rapping too. He was telling me to do music. I'm like, nah. Yeah, what you just yeah. freestyling on motherfuckers and shit? And that's what I, they was writing. Oh, okay. I don't, but they kept telling me to do music. I'm like, nah, that's yeah. y'all shit. Yeah. I played sports. Oh, okay, okay. So, what you do, football? Yeah. All right. What's your position? Middle linebacker. All right. Like <laughs> All right, okay. I, I just tested you since you didn't play that shit or not. But, okay. uh, Shit, then um when I went to high school, I um ran into uh I became cool with this nigga named SBR Peasy. Okay. And uh SBRJ and uh, they signed the Ice River. Oh, okay. And, um he was we just got real close and he he was rapping. Mm. I'm like, fuck it, everybody was been telling me to yeah. rap, let me rap. Yeah. And then we just started bullshitting with that shit. And we had put out a song, that shit had we had went to school out in the suburbs. Uh -huh. That shit blew up. Blew up. What was the track? Uh, it was it was called "Love Me When I'm Gone." Okay. It was a um, it just blew up around in the school in that area and shit. Right, right. They fucked with it up. Yeah, they kept yeah. us dropping shit. So what was that 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 cosign you got? Like, what was that first cosign you got where somebody was like, you know what, I can do this shit? But somebody told you like, damn, you nice. Shit, really the uh. Really, the hood for real. The hood? Like, just people. Okay. Everywhere. Suburbs, the hood. Everywhere. A a any chance I get to try to put out my music or, you feel me, let somebody hear it, they be like, oh, yeah, you hard. Keep going. You wear your music at that time? Yeah. Like, so I'm like, if they fuck with me like this, I got to keep got to keep pushing. Give the people what they want. And, and not only in the hood and the suburbs, social media. You know, social media is a big ass platform. Yeah, big ass exactly. platform. Makes everything smaller, come together. It's not... Just basically get you there without having to be there. Right. Definitely. So the, the name YGN uh, Dello, I, what is it your name come from? It's YGN Dilo. Oh, I'm, like, I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, YGN Dilo is, um, I really came up with YGN myself. Mm -hmm. But Dilo, I'm a junior. My oh. real name, I'm a junior though. Okay. So my real name is just, my real name is D'Angelo. Okay. But sure. Yeah, short D Lo, first two letters, last two letters. Gotcha. Put it together D Lo. Okay. And then YGN is uh young gorilla niggas. Mm. So I'll be around a bunch of bunch of motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I get it. So I, I, I I'm like when I was um rapping and stuff with my nigga SBR Peasy, um, we didn't have so many group names and shit like that and shit just wasn't working. We kept switching, switching, switching. And fuck, keep on switching. I'm about to come up with something myself. Yeah. Just stay with that shit. So I was like, I be around a whole bunch of niggas. Be on tip. I'm young. Yeah. Watch you in. It just fit. Watch you in, be love. Okay. Yeah. I respect that. I definitely respect that, though. So, musically, um, how many videos, how many projects, how many singles? Singles? See, I just started taking rap serious. Not too mm -hmm. long, but like a year. I'm a year in. Okay. And, uh, so, single, I ain't put out no project yet, but I'm working on it. Gotcha. Me and, me and watching and Ron, we got a, uh, we got a, uh, a little tape that's going to come out soon. And then I'm going to drop a little tape. But we got a couple, I got a couple singles out right now. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, cool, cool. Let me check out that. A couple videos. Couple videos? Yeah, I don't to. So, um, who are some of your influences? Who you grew up listening to? I know out here in the Detroit area, man, y'all got a lot of talent on all sides up here. Who were some of your influences growing up who you were listening to? Man, I was listening to everybody for real. Everybody? I mean, like, everybody. I'm talking females, males, local. Amen. Okay. Keisha Cole, <laughs> Shanti. Yeah, I'm coming with that. I'm with the pop. Uh, Mezzo, Shaka mm-hmm. Vez, Dex Osama, R.P. the Dex. Yeah. Band Gang, uh, Sada. Or everybody in the city. Everybody. I fuck with everybody. Okay, okay. That's cool. Y'all got a lot of options, like. And what's so cool about the Detroit area with y'all music is, man. At first, if you're not from there, you assume that it all sounds the same. But once you actually dive in and listen to everyone, you can hear specifically each artist, how they are not the same as the next. Yeah. But it's only when you embrace the culture you really learn that. Though. Yeah. So that's something I had to pick up on along the lines myself, though. And then, like you just said, alone, I listen to a little bit of everybody. Because yeah. y'all got a lot of talent. You got a lot of options out here. Definitely. And it's so crazy because, like, I, some days I don't even feel like listening to Detroit music. I got no Big Sean or Drake or uh, J. Cole type shit. Like, I listen yeah. to everybody, man. But you know what's so crazy? When it comes to Detroit town, y'all literally got somebody here that sounds like anybody in the industry, anybody yeah. anywhere else. Y'all got somebody that literally got everybody sound already right here. It's like it's own little Wakanda or some shit. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking crazy though. Like they say, they say Dex before he passed, he was giving you that '90s vibe, that '80s vibe. Yes, he was. Song, yes, he was. Yeah. Then you got a uh, a young nigga who I did a song with named Sterl Gotti. Okay, he sound like Lil Dirt. That's crazy. You got that Lil Dirt vibe. Then you got other people just you feel me? Yeah. Like Sada, Sada seems to stand out. Like, yeah, he definitely stand out. He in his own. Like, I was explaining this yeah. to somebody. I said the way. Sada rap, he gives you like, I'm trying to describe it. I said this to others, to somebody the other day, they thought I was bullshitting, but if you really pay attention to how Sada rap and the way he do shit, it's like a Lil John. Uh, you know how like Lil John yeah, yeah. make you want to party and make you want to fight? Yeah. That's what Sada got. Yeah. And that can't be really replicated by anybody. And then he got bars on top of it, it's so crazy. Definitely. So, musically, um, being that we're speaking of all the talent out here, though, who are some of the artists you look forward to working with? Like, out this way. Shit. Uh, I want to keep working with Sterl. Because I'll do that melodic shit, too. Yeah. Uh, Biz, Peasy, Rio. Uh, shout out to all the Flint niggas. Definitely. Flint going so crazy right now. Uh, Pac Man. Yeah. Niggas say that's my twin. <laughs> like, you look like a skinny back <laughs> No, I'm gonna say that. Shout out to Pac Man for sure. Uh, that's shit. Donut Crew. <laughs> Babyface Ray. Shout out uh, to Drago Bino. they my cousins for real. Okay. Uh, everybody in the city, I, I, I want to work with everybody. Yeah. Everybody got that. They sound. So I, like I can match up with anybody. Gotcha. Quick question. So when people like start taking off out here, and they start getting the music heard. Where is it do people usually like blow up from out here? Like the whole city of Franklin. Is there like a a club or the, the the radio break the local talent up here? Or is it just like the internet? Like how does that really it depends for like I, I remember time. reading about the I'm gonna cut you off. I remember reading about the big show thing and how he stumbled up on uh, Kanye at, at the radio. Yeah. But do people still pursue shit like that out here? Shit, some do. Yeah, some, some do. But like I said, it depends for real because like it depends on what type of genre you're looking for. Like if you're looking for that that turn up, that street shit, yeah. Niggas from the streets go have that go have that uh buzz because they from the streets. Because they from the streets. And, and they you fuck, already you know, know street the street street. Street. street niggas, they go to strip clubs and all type of shit. So yeah. they getting they breaking the DJ off, having their shit in the strip club. Yeah. Around bitches, that, you know. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. That's totally get it. Then you got, then you got young niggas like like us and shit like like that who who went to school and shit in high school and shit. And, and you already was, had a girl yeah. that knew you because you yeah. started up in school. Then you got like gang gang 
who was young and was the you feel me was wow. young in high school in the city, st- still street niggas. So they get they they fan from they, both sides. Yeah. So it really depends on uh, how you go about it. For okay. Okay. I definitely get that though. So let's say five years from now, for how old will we be in five years? Twenty six. Twenty six in five years. So five years from now, um, where do you see yourself with this music? Do you are, do you want to get a record deal? Do you want to stay independent? Do you want to be able to grow your independent brand enough that you end up signing artists of your own? Or do you want to just straight up get the deal and let the label do all the work? Shit, really, whatever the best opportunity that that come at me. Okay. Because you got some, you got some, uh, some people who just who ain't got no record deal and taking off, better than a motherfucker with a deal. Yeah, I see motherfuckers up here eat too. You got people that obviously who ain't taking off who need to sign the deal. <laughs> <laughs> But whatever come, but I heard, I heard, uh, I heard you really can't get far unless you sign to a label. See, part, I've heard that as well, too. But part of what I'm learning so far about the music industry is that once you've already established the brand Mm -hmm. and, and the size of the brand, you really don't need a record deal per se. Because beforehand, merchandising, all that shit was like, it was super secret. Now, a motherfucker can drop a whole jacket, a coat, shoes, everything. And, and when you get deals sometimes, these 360 deals where, like, every direction they can make money off you, they do that. Right. So your likeness of all kinds. So a motherfucker might... And this is the most backward shit in the world, if you think about it. A record deal is basically the money they give you to make your brand bigger, and then you owe it. And then they keep the royalties on what the fuck... It's like... UPS delivering a package and charging you because they delivered the package twice and then you got to pay for the package that got to your crib. It's so weird to me how that's set up like that though. But like you just said though, the main thing that I can see a lot of independent artists out this way that I've been seeing that they are doing is getting distribution deals, which they don't really speak heavily on. But um, distribution. distribution deals. Yeah, but the, I mean, that's what was helping them push their music like to like, let's say Europe, for example. Like, I got some friends in France that are actually a lot familiar with, like, a lot of Detroit rappers and shit. And it actually blew my mind. They even knew some of the lyrics and shit like that. English is like their third language. So, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But, um, I definitely can see that in something. So, but when you say, I know, they, they, you get a bigger uh, audience. True, true. But, that's more revenue coming in. Yeah. But, um... When you sign, you're going to get the audience that the label already got as well, for one. Mm-hmm. And but, then not only to mention that, you working with the other people that's on that label. Bingo. And you get their fans. Network. And supporters. And you'll get those features likely for free because you're on yeah. the same team. It's going to cost you nothing, let alone being able to get in contact with someone. I say, you're pretty, you're pretty smart. You had it occur. Definitely had it occur. I can that for sure, yeah, man. Definitely. So... If you, uh, for example, let's think about this musically. If you had one artist, one artist in the world, I don't give a fuck who it is, what's that artist name that you would get on a song? The biggest you can go, who's that artist and why? Uh, man. Anybody. I'd probably go, I'd probably go Hove. Why Hove? Ooh, that's strong. Oh, because, shit, it's Jay Z. <laughs> it's Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody better. Hey, hey you got to do Because we look up, okay, I, I, I say ho because of this. We look at, when we when we looking at uh, the people who underground, we looking at people who in the game right now, yeah. right? So that's your Raw Waves, your Big Shines, your Drakes, your, uh, yo, the baby. Young, young Boys, the Babies. Yeah. Who the fuck is they looking up to? Oh, oh, maybe not. You, you, you see, oh, you see, you see, Drake, one of the biggest artists of all time. He always have hope on his fucking shit, on his Everyone. albums and shit. Everyone, he, he, you want to go against Hope because you feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I if that. I, if I, if I get a feature from Hope, you know how much shit that's gonna do for me? That's gonna say a lot. You know, there hasn't been a lot of artists who got Jay Z versus. Who turned around and flopped or didn't do as well with the brand. 
I'm trying to think. Is it um, it's one artist, J Electronica? I think yeah. he got he got. But I don't know if he stayed independent or how his brand worked about though. But he was a pretty dope dude who I wish I had heard more from after the features. I think he had done well. And then um, did Kid Cudi get something as well? I thought Kid Cudi signed the uh, yeah yeah he signed yeah he signed the yeah. But I thought he had a Jay Z feature before. But probably not. Maybe I'm tripping. In particular, though, I think Kid Cudi writes a lot of music for people, though. Yeah, yeah, he does. Actually, he does. He does a lot of writing on the low. I wasn't gonna say it, but you said it, though. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, but that definitely is. So, let's say you said you also do melodic. So, do you have a particular style of music that you do other than, let's say, for the Detroit sound? You said you can do melodics. Is that something you prefer to do, or I prefer to do that? You prefer to do that, yeah. though. So, are the are you have a um, Particular producer that you go to for that? Uh, my nigga Tyler, for real. He um, engineer and shit all my music. I really can't. I really can't do it mm -hmm. for real. It don't even feel right if I do it with somebody else because they don't. Yeah. Know how to, they don't know. They don't know what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, they don't know my sound and my feel for the shit. Gotcha. I've been working with him, my nigga Tyler, for about. A year and a half and shit. Mm. So even when I was just playing with the shit, but now when I took that shit serious, he was st I was still was going to him, and he just know me. We just fit. I, I, I matter of fact, I just told him the other day. I think I had a session with him uh, a week ago. Mm. I'm like, Tyler, I get big, bro. We leave this bitch. I'm taking <laughs> the bitch yeah, I'm taking I fuck with it. Over there. Building your ground, building your team from the ground up always means more down the line. Um, you see some people that, uh, what's the saying, no new friends. I used to think like that was like really immature because once you reach certain levels, you're going to, yeah. you might outgrow people, but you're going to start dealing with different level of people and stuff. Do so, uh, you have a particular um, producer that you want to work with one day that's like top of the food chain? Like a Timbaland or No ID or a Hit Boy, or do you have one that's really? like, if I could ever get a beat from this motherfucker, I'm never looking back. Uh, shit. I'm from the D, so you know I gotta say hell of a bitch. <laughs> I gotta say hell of a bitch. You didn't say hell of a bitch. I said, oh, man. Hey, but I, I gotta, we gotta be uh, from hell of a bitch. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we just ain't worked on it yet. What? No, it's, it's coming oh, soon. Wow. You know, we, whenever you have a beat, from somebody big, or yeah. you got a feature from somebody big, you got to come correct. Yeah, you, so, you definitely got to come correct. It ain't no point of rushing. No. Nah. Take our time. Definitely gonna take the time. That could be the one. Yeah, we really not, only, not only would that do something for our name, but we got to withhold his name too. Yeah, yeah. Especially definitely. being in front of D, and we already, we just not getting a little bit of light looked on us. Yeah. The whole music industry want to look over us. You know what's so crazy? I never understood. Why is that? Why does it seem like the music industry skips over Detroit when it comes to musical talent? You got, you got the best music. I never understood that. Like, I see things like, I see artists like The Baby and Lil Baby and how they started off in Gunna and all that. And Sada Baby took off around the same time. Some of them did. But yet, they went further but if you look at the size of Sada's brand, which didn't have any label backing, he accomplished pretty much everything that a lot of those rappers had done without a real major behind him. But why do you think that is? I feel like they scared of us. Niggas up. They're like, they got it. They got it, man. They scared of the city for I'm looking at it like this, though. Like, it got to be. What people hear about Detroit, this is beyond it. This shit ain't good. Yeah. So, ain't nobody go want to look into Detroit, and they all they keep hearing is negative ass shit. But it's so once you hear and you from here, or you you be like, oh, this shit ain't that damn bad. What they they, they bad. write up the sound horrible. Yeah, as long as you if you ain't really you you on some bullshit, it, yeah. and you stay in your lane and mind your business, you good for real. But you still gotta know, like you still yeah. gotta have that street knowledge. Uh, don't go there. Don't yeah. Get, yeah, but it ain't that bad. But. It's all love here. That's why. That's why Jeezy and and Yo Gotti and, and shit. They always come here because it's love. They get love here. So you, show, you show love to us. We gonna show love back to you. Yep. And that's the whole point of uh, the No Fly Zone with Trick Trick. Yeah, I remember that. The issue was with uh, Rick Ross, 
No, what was it? He just was zipping in, booking shows, and zipping back out. That was our summer jam. You ain't finna. I don't even want to speak on that too much, but I feel like, I feel like me personally, I feel like Trick Trick feel like you ain't finna come here, get some money off us, and and, and, go. and leave and not show us love and not shop around, not come do a feature with somebody, not, not even not, not just show us love, but just show us like yeah, I fuck with y'all, yeah. Man. Like I said, you fuck with us, we fuck with you best, right? Like I said, we ain't got a lot of. Love from the music mainstream industry. arts, but I'm starting to see a lot of it now. Yeah, a lot of Chicago yeah. rappers is definitely fucking with Detroit artists and musicians, you know, from Sada to the Dirt with D Grizzly and all Man, that. The whole Michigan going crazy. Ain't going just crazy, yeah, yeah. Detroit, it's really too. Yeah, Flint, Flint. It's, it's some artists a little all over. Uh, Michigan is yeah. getting some momentum and steam. And uh, the the best thing I can say for more artists like yourself and more artists from out in my area of Michigan is just to keep dropping. Yeah. That's the one thing I keep seeing that separate people is how often is they really dropping these videos or how often they really put out a single? How often are you making me hear your music? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's one of the most important things. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that though. So you don't, you, whatever deal comes to you is what you're interested in. Jay-Z is the top of the food chain for features for you. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, I need to stay in the bank. You gonna get a deal. You, you definitely gonna fuck with that deal. I'm gonna fuck with it. You gonna fuck with it. The numbers <laughs> right. I'm fuck with the deal. The numbers right. You gotta do it. Definitely gotta do it. Not even even if the numbers ain't right. If the opportunity right. What does it come with? with? Like yeah. yeah if the deal with. is okay, we gonna do this, but your marketing gonna be this, so your brand gonna be up here. Yeah. Then it, it would make yeah, sense. That's those, okay, two years from now, when that deal over with, or however long the deal yeah. is. Now that money is gonna be there. Now I'm setting myself up. You feel me? Right. You gotta right. Set, set yourself up for the uh, future. Mm -hmm. Now, have you um have any uh pulled out any of these radio stations and check them out? No, yeah, no, not for real. Why not, man? Why would not uh, start taking this music shit serious? I can the pandemic shit. Not even just the pandemic shit, life. You feel me? Yeah. Life, I, I had this little setback. You uh -huh. feel me? We are dealing with some shit. Some cases and shit I ain't gonna get into. Okay, that's cool. Then, um, motherfucker, after the cases and shit was over with, the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I'm stressed about that. Yeah. And then once that shit finally over with, the pandemic hit, I had. Should have got in the way. Listen, the pandemic got in the way. So much money could be made, man. But the pandemic also made made a lot of money for yeah. sure. Made but it yeah. got in the way of some plans. I can say it got in the way of some money. It got in the way of some plans for some money. But inside of that, you know, it's a method to the madness. Yeah, a lot of people got rich. A lot of people I've man. seen got rich. A lot man. of motherfuckers I ain't never seen with five hundred dollars and twenty thousand dollars. Right, man. Twenty. I know niggas who look a hundred bands. Damn, a hundred. Hundred to eight. A hundred and eighty bands, huh? Man, I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy because without without the pandemic, there's no telling what people what positions they would have been in and whatnot. But yeah, sitting on their ass, bro. Yeah, for real. <laughs> for real, come to me, though. Yeah. I, I live too much of a flashy lifestyle to be broke. Definitely came to broke. And I'm a rapper. What type of rapper you know, bro? <laughs> you, you wouldn't know. believe, bro. Right? You wouldn't believe. Listen, Woo. Detroit, y'all y'all got a standard set around here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A nigga not going to step out with boom, 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 boom. Need four, five things. You certified, right? On the other side of the state, a motherfucker could just be whoever. A motherfucker could be a 2K creative player, bro. Right. It's horrible. It's horrible, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. But, um, you know, it's my job to filter through all of that and find the real talent and find the working people who really out here putting in music, putting in work, putting out their videos, marketing themselves, trying to be heard, trying to collab with other artists and whatnot and shit, though. But, um, I'm familiar with some of these musical events that was happening before the site, uh, excuse me, for the before the uh, pandemic. So, like, you familiar with like Rolling Loud mm -hmm. and uh, AC3? Not AC3. It's Atlanta. It's, it's like um, South by Southwest? Yeah. Yeah, AC3 is like that in Atlanta, though. Okay. 
So that's what those three events is. Uh, somebody said what's like Austin, Texas, the Atlanta one. Rolling Loud is usually Miami, uh, up in the uh, Bay, and I mean, somewhere. My nigga uh, Gigi Fowler, I was talking about earlier. Uh huh. And uh, my nigga Ben Clean, they performed at South by Southwest. They did? Yeah. Okay. See, that's, that's a come up right there. That's a clean come up, though. Definitely clean come up, though. So, other than those things that we spoke on earlier, though, Musically, what I what I like to hear from um, artists is uh, the direction they're pushing their brand in. And do you have a direction that you want your brand to go into in terms of like uh, style or like, or you just why to any genre? You talking about the music? Yeah, music yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, nah, not no style because I'm versatile. Gotcha. So it's, like you said, you. What you heard from me is the Detroit sound. Correct. But like I told you, I like to do the melodic sound. So you do a little bit of both. So when the project drop, I'm going to hear these melodies. I like the melodies. Well as these hard, cool. Yeah, hard bars. If you follow me on uh, Instagram or something, I just posted on my story yesterday or something. Of these doing the melodic Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, I think I did see that. And then I was... Rapping at the same time, yeah, like yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't, yeah. think, don't think I just got this melodic shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Uh, not not just the melodic shit, or not just the Detroit shit, but just the uh, the rapping shit, telling your um, telling your truth, mm -hmm. your story, for mm -hmm. just talking to the beat, yeah. right. not singing or rapping, talking to the beat. Sometimes you need that as well. Gotcha. Now, another question I wanted to get into is about um, some of the Detroit music and other things out here is y'all sense of fashion. And I'm noticing more than I've ever seen, and this is just for me being younger growing up here in Michigan, is how big Cartier glasses are out here. Uh -huh. And I'm starting to see a lot of people in the industry start wearing Cartiers and whatnot. Uh -huh. But I don't really see them really working with Michigan artists as much or even at all. And we spoke on earlier how the industry don't really rock with Detroit, but they do rock with Detroit. Yeah. They that's see us. Yeah. They see us. Yeah, 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 yeah. They fight our style. That's crazy. Because I, even Rick Ross, for example, I didn't see him. He's always wearing Cartier's now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've seen from DJ Khaled to even Drake now, Migos, Roddy Rich, you name it. You know, all these different mainstream artists are really rocking with it, though. But is it safe to say that the Cartier fashion was branded? As a popularity thing here in Michigan, in Detroit sure. first. For sure. Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely that's, here. Yeah, that's what I see. When you see a nigga with a, a Roly, a chain, and a Cartier's, oh, he, he got to be from the D. He got to be from the D. <laughs> he got to be from the D. And it's, a certain, it's certain ones, too. The White Buffs. Yeah. No, what, what is the significance? What is the significance behind White Buffs? I, I get it from different people, but no one gives me like a true answer. Like, what? They rare. What yeah? What is the what is it that made Cartier's popular? What is it made White Buffs even more popular in the Cartier brand? Like was that a custom thing, or was like you always originally could buy your Cartier's with a buffalo horn legs on them? No, uh, I don't know when they came out, but Cartier based. Okay, so Detroit, we a flashy ass city. Mm -hmm. So we like to brag about shit a lot. Mm -hmm. It's good for the rappers. Yep. Good for the streets. Yeah. The That's the culture. The culture yeah. is to brag and be confident about some things. Yeah, so when Cartier, a lot of people used to wear the wires uh -huh. or the woods. Yeah, I got wires. I fuck with the wires too. I love it. But uh, they started to come back to style. But um, when the white buffs, like I said, they rare. Yeah. So. Niggas want to be like, oh, I got the whitest, I got the white bus, I got the whitest bus, and not only that, that they wear, they the most expensive ones too. Oh, see, now that I didn't understand. Yeah. Okay. Because I was seeing people that have black bus and white bus, or just woods, and I understood that either one, Buffalo one, would be more expensive, but I didn't know white bus was more expensive than black. Yeah. Bus. White bus, white bus, they keep going up. White bus, about just white bus playing Play. shit. They about four bands. They 4,000 playing, James? 35 to 4 bands. Yeah. Being in Cartier's fashion and, and, and style 
with the music, it's all tied hand in hand out here. I can see how uh, some of the mainstream uh, industry artists are adapting to what's going on out here. Uh, what do you think is the blame for the huge success in Detroit music? Now, I remember a time, because uh, I used to live in Lansing as well, there was a time where you played in Detroit music. They gonna frisbee the CD and get your ass out the car. You know what I'm saying? They gonna put you the fuck out. And uh, if you wasn't from Detroit. But there's something that happened that led to the growth of Detroit music. And I couldn't quite figure out what it is that finally got everyone on board. They're like, okay, this is what it is. This is the sound. This is what we got going. This is what we're doing. I want to say it was Bad Gang and Cashy. Was it Bad Gang and Cashy? That's what I want to say. You know what? Because, oh, uh, um. I don't say that. Oh, my mama was a big ass song. Yeah, which I was in the inner city. Oh, it was? I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, damn. It yeah, was. That's, that's the inner city. You talking worldwide, right? Yes, yep, yep. yep. See, no, they should, they should, they should, all, all of them. Yeah. To me personally, who's responsible? Excuse me if I'm missing somebody, but for me, for like the Detroit, like the, the street niggas and shit, yeah. and shit it gotta be T. Yeah, I, I Grizz, so T. Grizz, I ain't going to go on nationwide. Because you know, he's the first, that first day he's the first street nigga rapper that's mainstream, but still yeah. can do that. Yeah. But, but, you got like, but you got like, but some people are responsible for even him being able to be looked at, such as like, so when you, when you one, be even, and, yeah. But you got to think though, like, you, you, the platform you speaking well, Blade, of, for real, cause Blade, you know what I'm saying? Blade is always gonna be the king of Detroit. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna top him. Yeah. No matter Blade how high bringing, bringing uh, them industry niggas to the city. Oh, and that's true. Yeah. I just watched an interview just recently with um, a popular cinematographer up here, and he spoke on dropping out of high school in the ninth grade mm -hmm. to go on tour with uh, Dej Loaf after mm -hmm. trying. They're talking about Jerry Productions. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, he's that young? I didn't know he was that fucking young. Jerry yeah. just turned, what? Like, he was in the ninth grade when he dropped out. 20 or 20 I don't know, but that nigga. He young as a bitch. That's so is, is he the top premier videographer? Yes. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Jerry Production. Jerry Production. Jerry Production. All oh, Midwest, bro. Wait, wait. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, Ro Kane, when he was with Chief Keith and all them, he do videos for Lil Dirt. OCF, yeah, he's, he's, he's up there. He up there. Them other people with CT Films and... Well, Cardiac's on the come up, too. Cardiac also just did a track, uh, a video for Dirt, did some shit. Well, they're basically primarily Peasy's cinematographer, and then they shoot for Babyface Ray from time to time okay. as well. Yeah, but JP been doing this for like four or five years now. Yeah, oh, he's so got that criteria. Cool. Yes, bro. JP had JP won't almost five bands for a video. He's not playing. Don't get it, bro. This is the the, so, the camera and the setup. Uh, you know? Talent wise, for uh, sure, Mad been doing this though. True. Which I was going to say, they got but it's, a heavy it's moment, enough bro. people that's working that you know what I'm saying. Like you can't just name one. Person. Uh, you you know, see how we name one who else on the come up? Who? Shout out to that nigga, uh, Zay Primo. Oh. I've seen that name two yeah. times. And, and I just, I just, I think I just followed him on Instagram. Zay Primo, he, he's a cinematographer as well? Yeah, Lazy, 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 Lazy,
But you can go on my side of this thing, and they're gonna fuck with you extremely strong, yeah. just because you're from out this way. Yeah, like I said, earlier, extremely. Like I said earlier, I'm I'm from the city, but I went to high school and the shit in the birds. I lived yeah. out there for a couple years too. Mm-hmm. But I'm from here, the west side of Detroit, and uh, like I said earlier, when I first started, when we first started making music, we was getting love shown out there like crazy. Mm. We wasn't really getting love shown out here in the city crazy. until later on, for real. Right, and then they saw, oh no, these people really are. Once you let you know, you actually do identify with the hood. You just so happen to be going to school out there. Yeah. And then they got to see that for themselves. Yeah, like, okay. Like, I, I want to say, I was living in the city. I never really went to a DPS school. Okay. I was living in the city. And, uh, my mama, my mama uh, would take me all the way out to my God people crib in the birds, 16 mm-hmm. and, and, and Shainer and shit like that. Mm. And, um, Garfield and shit like that. Mm-hmm. She'd take me out there a morning. I go to school from her house, my grandma house, out there. Or I spend a night out there a couple days and I go to school. Then I come back to the city and keep doing this shit, doing this shit until my mama. She was like, "All right, let me just move out here." So she finally moved out there, went to school. But a when I went when I moved out there, a break. A um, holiday, a weekend, I'm back in the back city. Back in the city. Then once high school, my mama was once I got to high school, my mama uh, went back to the city by like my senior year. Gotcha. But I stayed with my daddy out there in the burbs, um, so I can finish high school out there. Because if I ain't stay with him, I was gonna move back to the city. Right, right, right. My whole my mama whole plan of that was she wanted me to she wanted me to get a better education. Gotcha. And um and I get caught up in the street yeah. life or anything. Yeah, the streets got to offer. I get that. I mean, but shit, it's only so much she can do. You feel me? Yeah. It's like, when, by the time I get grown and shit, I'm gonna do what I want to do. I'm gonna do what I want to do, and it ain't. I was gonna, I'm a her only child. Oh, okay. And I'm my daddy oldest child. My my siblings like I got two sisters and a little brother. They young, young. Uh-huh. They like I'm 21. They like. Uh, 10, 11, 12. Oh, okay. So we got like a decade it's a huge in, between, yeah. in between us. So my daddy really like my best friend for real. Uh, so he he took me to my first strip club when I was 16 <laughs> and shit like that. Uh, up in, uh, what was that? Erotic City? Yeah. Yeah. Eating lamb chops and shit, watching the strippers and shit. Yeah. We had, man, we, I can tell you stories for days about me and him. Yeah. But, when when you when you just out here, you know, in child and shit, mm-hmm. and you you be around certain people and you meet certain people. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Yeah, have it like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. I definitely get it. Being that you say that, what are some of the perks and benefits that you see as a rapper? What are some of the benefits that you're receiving and can see that you will be potentially seeing in the near future? Other than like, well, maybe some people it's obviously money, but what are some of the benefits that come with just the fact that you're a rapper? Shit, I would I guess it could be its benefits and it could be a down downfall too. Yeah, people yeah. showing people showing love, even if it's fake love, but all love, fake love, it's all in one direction. It's all mm-hmm. yeah, it all come from one direction. People always want to be around you. People always wanna, oh he do this and that. Da, 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 da. Oh, we gotta have we gotta have such and such here. Da, da, da. People, yeah, mm, I feel crazy. like it ain't no benefits unless like they really see you got potential. Yeah. Or like they see you working on it or they know you, you fucking you can talk your shit. You yeah. Know? Like I feel like that's the only time to come with benefits. I get love, man. I get I my my supporters send me messages all the time. Yeah, you random cash apps and shit. <laughs> no, I, 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 I wish. You get rid of that. What about the hoe? The hoe? Hey, them two. Them two? They, they try to come around. Okay. Them two. Cool, cool, cool. That's good that you get the support and people know that um, they respect your talent and your craft and you're taking it serious and you're investing in it, though. So that's something that I see that um, 
and artists that are on the rise that are really invested in their craft and being who they're saying they're being and whatnot and um, uh, aspiring to do that and putting the legwork in though. What are some of the craziest shit you've seen so far in this music industry? Being in hip hop. What are some of the wildest shit that you've seen with this? Just bitches being groupies for real. Groupies. Yeah, just groupies right now. That, that's the crazy, the wildest shit I can see right now. That shit. That shit. I haven't seen a bitch fuck the whole team. <laughs> On the whole rap team? The whole rap team. The whole, how many people? Uh, what's the whole rap team? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I still eat Raymond. Forty poking out the side, bitch. I'm not dangling. I done left my old bitches in the past, though. Shitting on these niggas, feeling like an asshole. I don't give a fuck as long as my cash loan. Chopper still got my back, it's my backbone, bitch. Free my 
my nigga fat to me and gang was fucking all these hoes back to back to back pulling all the rap.